G'day everyone and welcome to the GrainCorp Central webinar. I'm Izzy Hutchinson, the Grower Services Manager for our southern region based in Wagga. I will be your host this afternoon for this webinar which is being held in place of grower meetings at Wallora, Berrybank, Westmere and Geelong sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone and has posted plenty of challenges. One positive has been the return of some decent rainfall across the east coast. It is an exciting time for the industry and we are pleased to be involved in hopefully bringing home another decent crop across the Victorian region. No doubt some topics discussed this, this afternoon will lead to further questions. You may have noticed that this session is equipped with a chat feature. I strongly encourage you to put forward any questions at any time and we will do our best to answer them as we go along. If we do not get to your question prior to the end of the webinar, then you can expect a call from the appropriate GrainCorp team member and they will discuss further with you. Given it's a busy time of the year, I will endeavour to wrap this session up within the hour. So please understand that we may not be able to drill down into too much detail at every site. To kick the presentation off this afternoon, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you all to our local site manager team. Hello, Brad Keeler from GrainCorp. I'm the site manager at Westmere and Laura. Um, this year at Westmere, we'll be taking wheat, barley and canola. Operating hours will be between roughly 7 to 12, extending if needed during those busy periods. Laura will be, we're trying to run 7 to maybe 11 and we'll split shift that as well, similar to what we do at Westmere. The grades at West Laura will be taking are wheat and canola and red wheat there as well this year. Recruitment this year is going well at Wallora and Westmere. Um, a lot of returning staff from last year are coming back, so you'll probably recognise a few faces again this year. Hi, I'm Pat Prendergast, Victorian Ports Manager based in Geelong. This year at Geelong Pro, we're looking forward to a very safe and productive harvest. We'll be taking wheat, barley and canola as usual, full spread of wheat grades, feed and malt barley, and non-GM canola. Staffing-wise, our harvest recruitment numbers for casuals are looking pretty good. So hopefully you'll see some fresh faces among the familiar ones you may know well. We'll be running flexible shifts across both sites and have implemented a number of strategies to ensure everybody is kept safe. We'll be sending out regular communications to our local grower base to ensure we best suit our operations to meet your needs. If you have any feedback or questions regarding our SEGs or operations, please don't hesitate to contact us. On behalf of myself, Tony Mallington, and the rest of the Geelong team, we're very much looking forward to working with you this harvest. See you soon. Thank you. Hopefully that provides you with some insight into who you'll see on site this coming harvest. I now want to take a moment to speak with Sean Barker, our General Manager for Customer and Commercial. Good afternoon, Sean, and thanks for your time this afternoon. Can you give us an update as to what's been happening around the business in the last 12 months to ensure Grain Corp's ready to receive this coming crop? Izzy, thank you for having me today and to all the growers who have long got, logged on, thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to get this update. Um, yes, it has been a busy 12 months at GreenCorp. Um, I'm going to run through a few things that, that we've been working on, Izzy, but I'll leave pretty much all the detail to Chris, Luke and Craig and yourself throughout this session. Um, at GreenCorp, we successfully demerged from our malt group back in March. So United Malt Group now trades as a separate entity on the ASX and Grain Corps trades as Grain Corp on the ASX. That's allowed Grain Corp, as we've come out of that arrangement, to have zero core debt, which puts us in a very strong financial position moving forward. What does that mean for our growers? It allows us to continue the appropriate investments across our supply chains, ensuring growers get the appropriate return for their grain. Also, with that demerger, it meant we had a new CEO start in Robert Spurway. Robert's been with the business now since March, pretty much coming in on, on day one of the pandemic of COVID. Robert's done a very good job getting across the business in the circumstances. He has been able to get out into certain areas of the business at times, and I know he's excited to get out there more and meet more growers into the coming harvest. Back in March, we did see the large planted crop across the East Coast. So we did start planning back then for the harvest that's coming at us. As we did with the import program of grain in the drought, we knew it was going to take some effort to get our supply chains operating again. We focused in three areas, our people, our machinery uh, and our export customers to ensure we had everything ready for this harvest. 
As you'll hear from the team today, we're very pleased to announce on the casual work front, we've had 3,000 positions filled. We've had over 6,000 applications for those positions. We've also been able to bring in 21 new stackers across the network. Um, and, and as you'll hear from the team, we're in a very good position as we enter that harvest period. Through that planning, COVID throw, has thrown a number of challenges at us. But one thing hasn't changed during that is we wanted to ensure a safe and efficient experience for you, the grower at our site this harvest. That has meant there are some changes to the delivery process, which we'll run through today, um, and also brings it back to relying a little bit more on our digital solutions of Crop Connect and Fastway to deliver that service. Izzy, we're really excited uh, with the potential of this crop. We're all focused on getting it in for growers here and, and getting that grain monetized um, overall. I just want to wish all our growers a safe and prosperous harvest. Uh, and just remind everyone throughout today, use that chat function uh, for any questions. Um, so thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for that update, Sean. I've actually got a question myself. We've seen the markets rally lately. How do you think this will go when the headers actually start to roll? And do you think we'll see some pressure come onto those numbers? A common question, uh, Izzy, as, as we always get um, through that. Um, the answer is, uh, I, I don't know. Um, and I think the best way to look at that, though, is, is look at some of the factors that are, that are impacting price today overall. So the three things I'll work through are the foreign currency, our exchange rate, and we'll look at some of the local supply and demand um, factors that are impacting price and then also on the export side of things. So when we look at the currency, uh, we take a lead of, of our top four banks, as we do in Australia. I was reading their forecast only two weeks ago. We're at about 72 and a half cents, and they're all predicting we'd go to 75 cents. Today, we are closer to 70 cents, um, and, and finding some confidence in where that currency is going to go into the future, it's very hard to do overall. Combine that with the US election, I think we're going to see some volatility in our currency markets, which will impact price as we go through that. A one cent move in currency is worth about $5 a tonne. Uh, at the moment to our local prices. In the local supply and demand area, yes, we have a large production across the East Coast this year. That's going to, at times, put pressure on different things, whether that's storage or transport or ports overall, and that will have an impact on prices as well at different stages. In the export market, we are seeing very strong demand at the moment um, globally for wheat, barley and canola. Um, with the large crop, though, we'll be marketing this crop over an extended period of time. So as we move forward throughout the year, um, those global prices will, will impact us even further. Uh, as an example, in the, in the Russian market at the moment, the price difference between June uh, and July, August is about $15 a tonne lower. So not that that may stay at that, but that will impact prices as we enter into that harvest period overall. So... Izzy, I guess the only thing I can say, it's really good to see very good production, and I guess those prices we're seeing today match with that it is, is a very good thing for the industry. Brilliant. It sounds like it's an exciting time in the grains market over the next three months as we roll closer to harvest. Now, Sean, I've got a question here from Louise. She would like to know, you've been with Grain Court for several years now. What is it that really excites you about the Grain Court business? Been with Grain Corp 13 years, Izzy, and yes, I am still excited um, as we go through. There are a number of things that excite me about Grain Corp um, when I think of it, but um, just recently, uh, this one becomes pretty easy. It's the people, Izzy. It's not just the people in Grain Corp, but just the people we get to interact with in our industry, um, whether it's growers, um, whether it's our staff, whether it's our customers overall. I think as an industry, we really attract good people, um, whether it's the resilience required, the, the you know needing to adapt to certain situations. Uh, I just think it's definitely the people. COVID's highlighted that for us. Um, I think seeing how the industry's come together to keep our supply chains operating, to show what an essential service um, the green supply chains are and, and deliver without fault across the industry, I think is a is a testament to that. So that's an easy one. It's definitely the people. Brilliant. It excites me to hear that it is the people, both at Grain Court, but also our external 
customers that we're dealing with and just generally the ag industry because it's one of the things that really excite me about this um, about this business as well. So thanks for your time there, Sean. For the remainder of the session, we have three of our very talented staff members on board to answer any of your questions. I really do encourage you to utilise that chat section and we will endeavour to cover them all off. The panel this, this afternoon includes Craig Cochran, our Supply Chain South Senior Manager, Luke Price, our Area Manager for the Central Area, and Chris O'Rourke, our Grain Marketer for Central and Southern Mallee areas. I'll kick off with Craig first. And what I want to know more about here, Craig, is what's been happening down at Berry Bank. It sounds like we've got some exciting news going on down there. Thanks, Izzy. Yeah, and uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, certainly this year has seen a, a lot of change at Berry Bank. Um, and I think the photo should be coming up. Um, and in the first photo, you can see that, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of civil works undertaken there with the three new bunkers laid. Um, the actual bunker walls are actually in place as well now, which is fantastic. And we've begun work on the intersection with the Hamilton Highway. Um, so to get the access off that road, um, rather than coming in the old way, which is fantastic as well. Um, if we kick through to the second picture, I think we've got all the footings now down um, for the sample stands. And if we kick to the final picture, we'll see that the Weybridge decks um, and the bases for those have also been laid. So we've had a lot of weather down there, as everyone would know, um, but the team's done a fantastic job of ploughing through that and getting everything and keeping us on track. Um, so you're really excited to, uh, to announce that we will be ready for harvest down there and we'll have the extra 60 odd thousand tonnes uh, ready to go. So yeah, a fantastic outcome. Brilliant. That's pleasing to hear that we'll, um, the Berry Bank growers will be able to benefit from those side upgrades, but also the growers within the region. I'll, I'll cross across to Luke. Luke, can you just give us a recap of what's going on in regards to barley, canola, but also some of the specialty grades of wheat that we've got going on in those sites this harvest? Yep. Thanks, Izzy. Um, yeah, so at Berry Bank this year, we'll be taking um, APW, ASW, AGP, as well as red wheat. We'll be taking that for the first time down at Berry Bank, and we'll be taking canola. Um, we've decided not to take uh, barley there this year. Um, so, yeah, uh, with our crop surveys and that we've done. Westmere will be taking white wheat, um, H2, ASW, APW. Uh, we'll be taking Planet, Malt and Bar 1 and Canola. Wallora will be taking um, APW, ASW, AGP and Red Wheat and we'll be taking Canola there as well. Um, yeah, and Carayo, they'll be taking Spartacus, Malt, Planet Malt and Bar 1 there and the Geelong Terminal will be taking Wheat uh, Spartacus malt, planet malt, and bar one and canola. Brilliant. Thanks, Luke. It sounds like there's plenty of options for all those grades in those few sites that you've just covered off. Now, we've had a question come in here from Terry, and it's a great question. There is a lot of media around staff and labour. How is Grain Cook going about recruiting staff for this harvest? I'll get Craig to give us an overview of that. Yeah, good question. Um, and so we've, we're pretty lucky. Uh, our skilled roles across the business are about 90% filled right now with more applicants to allocate to those tasks. Um, we're really in a comfortable position for our, our bunker operators as well. Um, across the East Coast, you heard Sean say before, we had about 6,000 applicants uh, for 3,000 jobs. So yeah, we're really pleased to see that kind of support uh, to want to come and work for us. Um, and we've also factored in at most of our sites the capability of running multiple shifts uh, as required and certainly in at Geelong, um, yeah, it'll be Day and Arvo, but we also have the ability to go 24-7 if it's required. So, uh, yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of oomph if we need it there to get the harvest in. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. Luke, what does that actually mean on a localised site level? How are we going with our local site recruitment? Yeah, Izzy, site recruitment's going well. Um, we've nearly locked in a lot of our uh, sample staff and Weybridge staff at the sites, but we're still after some more labourers. So if anyone knows of any labourers there, um, yeah, could you yeah, apply online or stuff like that? Yeah, thanks. And we're currently still yeah. recruiting 
uh, with hopefully doing some interviews shortly for a site manager position at Berry Bank. Lovely. Once we um, once we appoint that position, we'll definitely be sure to make sure the growers are aware of how to contact that person and um, and where to go for more details. So we'll keep you posted on that. Now, Craig, it sounds like we're pretty well sorted on the people front. What about equipment and how are we going there? So, Izzy, yeah, obviously this crop has enormous potential. Um, and we did start planting way back in March when we saw the massive plant, um, and that's earlier than ever before. Uh, when you throw in on top of normal harvest planning and COVID pandemic, it has really been an intense planning period for us. That being said, we've locked down our plans and we've got multiple contingency plans in place and that they're ready to use. Supporting these plans, our business has spent in excess of $15 million in the last six months, bringing in 21 additional stackers, 400 tonne an hour drive over hoppers to support those um, and multiple tarps to hopefully cover this massive crop that's coming at us. On top of that, our planning, our stacker movement plans have kicked off um, and the first stackers are coming out of Queensland down into the lower section of New South Wales and then they'll start moving down into Victoria in the coming weeks. So all in all, Izzy, I think we're, uh, we're ready. We've got the gear and we've got the plan in place to uh, bring this crop in. Awesome. Sounds like we've got the gear and the people sorted. Now, we heard from Sean a little bit earlier on that the business has been very busy trying to get ready for COVID and understanding what harvest looks like with COVID. So I'm going to cross across to Craig and just get an understanding of what's been happening in that space and some of the changes that the business has made to ensure your safety as well as our staff safety. Thanks, Iz. Uh, yeah, we've certainly uh, had to reassess our processes um, to minimise the risk of COVID on our sites. Um, and as such, we've developed processes that will reduce that human contact, um, allowing almost all delivery functions to be contact free while still maintaining our commitment to quality service. So our advanced uh, contact free technology platforms, fast way for grain sampling and receival and Crop Connect for digital transactions are central to that revised plan um, and as are the changes to the existing practices. Um, our processes have changed in sort of four major ways, and I'll just kick through those. So our first one, minimising the movement of all Grain Corp staff and customers um, at all times. So this includes, but it's not limited to, um, no access to our sample stands um, or our waverages. And we are particularly aiming to minimise the movement of truck drivers on and around our sites. Social distancing and hygiene measures will be enforced as standard practice at all sites along with all drivers and growers required to scan a QR code at the sample stand and then again when the truck tears off at the Weybridge. The second part of the plan is the use of the updated delivery advice form. Um, our new form will assist with reducing the contact between Grain Corp staff and our growers and truck drivers and also this process will increase the efficiencies in our sample stands. So the delivery advice form must be used for every delivery to the site and also for any grower samples being dropped off to be tested. So if you can supply the samples uh, in a Ziploc bag um, with the delivery advice, we'll test the sample and then we'll call or test you the results. And please be aware that the delivery advice will not be returned after use. And number three, um, our, there'll be no option to select cash or transfer grain to contracts at our sample stands or waybridges. All deliveries will be placed in the warehousing and then transferred via Crop Connect or calling the grower hotline on 1800 grains. Um, we'll still collect NGR and paddock, paddock details, treatment status, and vendor decks at the sample stand or Weybridge, and we will maintain active live prices for you at our sites. The fourth part of the, the fourth pillar of this change no transfer of clipboards around the site with drivers. Um, any paperwork required will not be handed back or signed. And the size of text on our paperwork has all been increased to assist with reading from a distance, for example, when you get down to the uh, receival hopper. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact your local site manager or your grain marketer or call the grower hotline on 1-800-GRAINS. Lovely. Thanks, Craig. We might just take a moment, though, to have a look at the COVID flow chart, just so we can provide a visual of some of those things that have changed. Can you just walk us through that, if you don't mind? Certainly, uh, and I'll focus on the truck deliveries. So as normal, a truck will arrive at the sample, st sample stand. Uh, you'll register it as a visitor. Um, we'll obviously then get your delivery advice form 
which will probably be at the bottom of the sample stand or the top, just depending on where you're delivering to. Um, and then we will then process the sample um, and we'll see what the results are. We'll print out the sample docket for you. Um, we'll present that back. And if everything's okay with the sample, uh, then you'll just proceed on. If it's not, then you can ask for a retest and we'll follow that process as well. So if everything is right, you move on to the gross waybridge, um, which we'll process, and then we'll put you and direct you to where we need you to go. Um, you'll be tipped at the hopper, and then you'll come back to the tear waybridge, and we'll give you a receivable docket. You won't have to sign it like hist historically. Um, we'll just give you the ticket, and then you will be right to go, and we'll get you the scan off. And that is the process. Lovely. Thanks, Craig. It's probably a good segue into a question we've got here from Murray. When can I roll my tarp back in preparation to getting the load tested? Uh, there, there is actually no rule around when you can do it. Um, so, yeah, if you present at the, uh, the sample stand, certainly before you get to the sample stand, it'd be great to have it off. That'll keep it uh, flowing. Um, but, yeah, if, for example, if it is raining and you've got a load there and we still are able to take some in, um, say Geelong, um, then yeah, just roll it off as soon as you get under the sample stand and we fully understand that we don't want the loads getting wet. But if the weather's fine, there really isn't a rule to it. Um, you can, as long as it's there, the more efficient we are, the better we are. So uh, yeah, I hope that answers it. Brilliant. Yeah, I think that um, I think that's good. And I think the other thing we we probably need to mention there as well, Craig, is just that even though we're going contactless, the truck driver or the grower is still responsible to open their back tailgate. So when you get to that hopper, you'll still need to jump out of the truck, walk down, open your tailgate and, um, and go from there. So the sites will not be opening your tailgates again this year. So the same process as last year. We've had another audience question come in here, Craig. As you outlined, growers are required to provide the grower delivery advice form when delivering. Can you please explain this and where we find this form from? This question is coming across from Annie. No worries, Annie. Um, look, the grower, grower delivery advice form, it's actually available on our website and it's an editable version. So you can pre-populate it before you use it. Um, or you could call 1800 Grains to get a copy or you can call the local site manager. We do have um, booklets of these being sent out to our sites. Hopefully they'll be out there by the end of the week or early next week. Um, so you'll be able to get them from there as well. But we feel that the delivery advice form is pretty intuitive. Um, the questions are pretty easy. For example, your NGR, your contact details, the commodities, etc. So it's, it is very simple to use the form. What we would ask is that all of the uh, data that you put into it is accurate because then that will dictate how we handle your grain um, and making sure that we get the maximum value for both yourselves and the supply chain. Thanks, Liz. Lovely. I noticed on that grower delivery advice there, Craig, that there's a question about in-crop glyphosate for barley. Can you just elaborate on this for me, please? No worries at all. So obviously it's not um, approved to use on malt barley, glyphosate. Um, so if you've used that in crop, um, that treatment needs to be declared for both our international and domestic customers so that we can ensure the quality of the product that goes to them. Um, treated barley will be binned and ticketed as feed barley regardless of the test results, um, assuming that they're at least bar one quality. Lovely. I think, thanks for that, Craig. Just so growers are aware, we, we are following this COVID process in the north. So we've got grain coming into Queensland as well as our northern New South Wales sites. And we're actually finding that these, the processes that we've got in place, particularly the grower delivery advice, has actually been speeding up um, the sample stands slightly because we can get the information, put it in the computer as quickly as possible, and then you can get your grain tested and move on. So things have been working quite smoothly across the northern sites, which is a, um, a pleasing result so far. I'll go across to Luke. Luke, we heard there from Craig in regards to what's happening with COVID. How does that affect how a grower requests a retest? Uh, thanks, Izzy. Yeah, so that won't change. So we've got two options there, whether you want the grain that we've already got in our sample stand retested or if you want your truck to retest. So if you just pull back around and at the sample stand and we can reprobe you. So that hasn't changed. So it'd be the same as previous years. Lovely, thanks Luke. What about samples? We heard there that the process of delivery is changing. What do growers do when they come into site and where do they go with their samples to get tested? 
Yeah. So at the sample stand, the guys will have that uh, a table out the front or a bucket um, on a rope so that they can pull up a sample. If you just uh, have a Ziploc bag with one kilo of uh, grain, as I'm just holding up there with your delivery device in it, we can sample that grain and then send you a text message or a phone call uh, through with your results. Um, so, yeah. Lovely. Thanks for that, Luke. Now, remember, if you've got questions as we're explaining things like the COVID plan or, or so on and so forth, please utilise our chat feature and we'll answer them as we go along. Now, Chris, we've got an audience question here. This is coming from Jono. If the sites are going contactless, how does the grower sell their grain on the Weybridge? Thanks, Izzy. So as Craig mentioned, with part of the COVID plan, all grain is going to be placed into warehouse this year. From there, our Crop Connect platform can be utilised to complete all transactions. So this can be done through the Grain Corp app, cropconnect.com.au, or through a phone call with our 1800 Grains team. So the Crop Connect platform, uh, through that you'll be able to see all your load details. You'll be able to see where the truck is on site with different notifications. Uh, and you can also use it as a stock management tool to cash loads and for contract management. In there as well, we've also got some accounting features such as RCTIs and delivery summaries. And as I mentioned, with those uh, push notifications, that'll enable uh, growers to sort of set up so that they can receive a message when the truck has left the Weybridge so that for growers wanting to make cash sales promptly, they'll get the notification, which will be very beneficial for them. So in general, it's just really a one-stop shop uh, and suggests that everyone jumps online before harvest or downloads the app, uh, become familiar with the platform. There are also a number of YouTube videos online that'll step you through everything that Crop Connect offers as well. Brilliant. It sounds like it's a pretty easy process. You did mention there that grain will automatically go into warehouse and then you utilise Crop Connect to complete your sales. What costs and other benefits are involved in warehousing in Crop Connect this harvest? Sure. So Crop Connect and the Grain Corp app are completely free for growers to use. Uh, for warehousing, last season we increased the grace period and that'll be going, going into this season as well. So that's the month of delivery plus the following two months. Uh, another benefit of crop of warehousing is you then are eligible to use Croptimizer, which is our quality upgrade program, which is applicable to both wheat and barley. There's no changes year on year on how you would access uh, this program with growers still needing to call the 1800 grains to have any tickets regraded. So you'll also still need to meet those same three criteria for a load to be eligible. So that's meeting the parameters around protein and screenings. Uh, you need to have grower equity, meaning that you've delivered uh, grain into the higher grade and it's sitting in warehouse, as well as our stack averages on site, being in a position to allow upgrade. Uh, you will be notified through text messages uh, twice a week for any loads that are eligible, uh, but would encourage growers, if they believe they have a load that could be eligible for crop demiser, to jump on the phones and give us a call and not necessarily wait until the end of the harvest or in, until they've finished harvest. Brilliant. Thanks for that. What about payment options? Is Grain Corp offering any flexibility when it comes to payment options this year, Chris? Absolutely. So our standard payment terms, which a lot of people would be aware of, are two business days from transfer. Uh, we also offer deferred payments, which are available on contract, uh, which will put that payment out into the next financial year. So an example would be for any growers that would be looking to make sales during harvest or before the end of Jan. Currently, uh, we would be looking to add a, an extra $6 per tonne for any canola, $4 a tonne for wheat, and $3 a tonne for barley. Another option that could be good for growers to look at this season would be Grain Corp's Harvest 10 pool. So it also has three different payment types. So there is the harvest payment, which is 70% uh, upfront. We have the deferred payment, which is 75% in July, uh, with both of those having the following payment in October. And we have our distributed payment, which is 25% each quarter. That's a great option if you're wanting to participate in the market throughout the year, while also just reducing your exposure to that market volatility. Brilliant. It sounds like there's plenty of options there for some flexible payment. We've got a few audience questions come in, so we'll go across to them. The first one is, Mark would like to know about SFWR and where we can take delivery of that. I'll get Luke to answer this one for us. 
Uh, yep, SFWR, we will be taking it at Willora, Westmere and Berrybank. What about down um, into the Corrupt bunkers there, Luke? Um, I'm unsure on that. Craig might be able to... Can yes, you Craig's can you confirm yes. that, please, Craig? Yes, I can confirm it is. We will be taking, uh, yeah, Redweed into the bunker at Corrupt. Brilliant. Sounds like Mark's got plenty of options for his red weight deliveries. Um, and then I've got another one here from Steve in regards to Croptimizer. Can Croptimizer be used across different NGR numbers? I'll get Chris to answer this one for me. Yeah, sure. So uh, in short, no. The Croptimizer is only eligible, I guess, in the parameters for each NGR. So for an example of grower with share farming accounts, you can't use equity from another NGR uh, to upgrade tickets on a, a different NGR. So it is just all based under those tickets in the one NGR. Lovely. Thanks, Steve, for that one. Now I've got one here from Geraldine. It sounds like the sites are ready to receive the grain harvest. Is a business also ready for the export program across the East Coast? I'll get Craig to give us an update of what's been happening down at the port. Uh, great question. I was actually in there this morning for their uh, early morning toolbox uh, as we're doing our stock for safety days, uh, and they're actually uh, finishing off an export vessel today. Um, so, yeah, so I'd say that Geelong is certainly ready to roll. Um, Portland, uh, in a similar position in the last sort of six to 12 months, have done some vessels. Um, as we look at upcountry, we're ramping up our staffing. I think that we're definitely going to need to do that at the port to get to that 24-7 uh, where we'll need to for this big crop. Uh, when you look at it, we've been very, very lucky in that the uh, the customers have looked after our export stem and support us very strongly out of both Portland and Geelong, uh, which bodes well for the entire supply chain and certainly all the growers on this call. Um, but in saying that, yeah, we're just bringing in the new team now um, and we'll train them up and uh, add them to the existing crew just so that we can provide that service ongoing because it looks like we're going to be flat out for uh, pretty much all of 2021, which is fantastic. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. Now, keep these questions coming because they're fantastic. Now, Chris, with that large export year planned, what options do the growers have to go directly into the ports post-harvest? So we currently have uh, contract pricing available for delivery direct into the port post-harvest, which uh, will include Grain Corp's two business day payments, as well as the option to still defer those contracts as well. So into Geelong Terminal, we're pricing wheat, barley and canola, and also with wheat being priced into Portland. So where that sits from a pricing perspective, currently for wheat, we're, we're around the 320 mark. For barley, it's currently sitting in the high 230s, and canola around that sort of 610 mark. So if you're interested to find out more or make sure you're receiving uh, communication on those prices, please get in contact with myself or through the 1800 grains number. Lovely. Now, Craig, it's a pretty topical question every harvest and it's in regards to how the Geelong port will manage the export task, but also ensure a quick turnaround time for growers in that busy December to February harvest period. Can you shed some light on that for me? Uh, yeah, certainly can. Um, as always, uh, the upcountry uh, deliveries into the port by truck will be time slotted uh, and a normal time slot down there contains 12 trucks an hour. Uh, that gets cut back to six and then sometimes it gets cut back to two or four depending on the volume that's coming in at harvest. As always, the harvest priorities will be put in place and we'll have the lines that are specifically for them. Uh, so, yeah, I don't see any delays in the in the harvest receivables at the port. Lovely. That's great to hear. I've got a question coming in from the audience, and it's in regards to canola sustainability. Boris is interested to understand some of the changes that have been made to canola sustainability. Chris, can you give us an update on this one, please? I can. So uh, this year, seven of the major exporters and NGR have come together to make the sustainability process for easier for all parties that are involved. So the general guidelines and the uh, principles of the program remain similar to previous years. But instead of filling out a form for every buyer, uh, you now just complete the one form with NGR and that'll cover off the, the seven exporters. So sustainable canola draws a premium into the EU market 
So it's really important that we continue to, to see growers register for this program as that's going to be a key market for Aussie canola. So if you are growing canola this season, I suggest you get in contact with NGR for any further information and to complete the declaration. Uh, I will say that for a small percent of growers that uh, they may be randomly selected for a farm audit post-harvest uh, with Sustainable Grains Australia. Uh, if you are looking for any more information on that, that can be found through the Australian Oil Seeds Federation or AOF website, or please get in contact with us and we'll be able to forward on any fact sheets and other information that's needed. Brilliant. Thanks for that update. Now, throughout this session, I've heard numerous times 1800 grains. Chris, can you just give me an understanding of what this number is, where it's located, and some of the services it's actually providing for growers this coming harvest? Sure can, Izzy. So 1800 grains is our new take on our previous 1800 call line, and it's really just to make the, the number a little bit easier for growers to remember when they're out in the paddock. So the previous 1800 number will still call through to the same line. Uh, so this is staffed up in Wagga in anticipation of a busy harvest this year across southern New South Wales and Victoria. So that team's trained up and really ready to mirror really anything that can be done in Crop Connect, as well as work alongside our merchant team just to answer any questions that you may have. They'll, uh, they'll be there to help you sign up for any of our communication tools, such as our weekly grower emails that go out, our contract pricing emails, as well as text messages that go out, our operational text messages uh, about closing and opening times. Um, and in general, they're, they're really just there to make harvest as stress-free as possible for you. Uh, and can also just direct any calls onto any other departments if required. Lovely. Thanks for that update. I've got a question come in from David, and David would like to know, will Geelong be taking out of zone trucks over harvest or keeping the local, sorry, or keeping two local deliveries? As last time we had a big harvest, Geelong ran out of space. I'll get Craig to give us an update on this one. David? Thank you, David. Um, great question. Um, I just I want to take everybody back about two years. Uh, Grain Corp had a restructure, um, and one of the changes that we made was that we made the end to end um, under the one manager. So I look after now all of Southern New South Wales and Victoria and the ports. So we have the end to end supply chain and logistics under control now. So I'd like to think that that sort of uh, issue that we had back then won't happen again um, because it really is up to my team to decide what and when we're sending the grain to Geelong from what you're calling out of zone. Uh, I still think that we're going to have a massive harvest for Geelong um, and I think that when you look back and we used to always talk about the 80 kilometre rule, uh, when you think about it now, we've got grain being grown over in Gippsland. Um, you've got grain being grown south of Denali that naturally flows to Geelong rather than that reverse freight differential that goes back up. Um, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on it, but like I said before, now that my team literally controls the whole supply chain end to end, um, we'll control it so that that doesn't happen again. Um, and we certainly have those early vessels booked in. Um, we will be able to make sure that your harvest as it comes in, it's going out. So, uh, yeah, very excited about that too. Lovely. Thanks for that update. I've got another question coming in from David. Is it likely that Grain Corp will accept barley at Berry Bank site in the future? I'll get Luke to make a comment on this one. Uh, yes, yes, we'll be looking forward, uh, looking at it, um, definitely. Um, it's Yeah, we could see us taking barley in the future there, yes. We'll be doing grower surveys uh, when planning's taken, um, so to get a rough idea of uh, what's out there and different types um, as well. Lovely. Thanks, Luke. I've got a question coming from Stu. Do we have to use the grower delivery template or can we utilise our own, providing all the information is listed? Craig, I'll get you to um, answer this one. Stu, I don't know if it's Stu Hamilton or not. Probably is. Um, Stu, yeah, we would really like you to use the grower delivery template that we've got. Uh, it just makes it easier. It does, means that our people don't have to try and decipher it and get it out of order. It's in there in the way that we need it to put it in the most efficient way. So if you could use our template, there's going to be a lot of them out and about. There'll be books at all of our sites, um, including Geelong. So, yeah, there'll be a lot of templates or you can actually download the one um, off the website that you can actually pre-populate and then just print them out. So, uh yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty easy system to use just using the Grain Corp one. Thanks, Stu. 
Thanks for that question. Keep them keep them coming. We are we are drawing closer to a close. So if you've got any final questions, please use the chat feature, and we'll answer them prior to the end of the webinar. Now, Craig. We've covered off a lot of different topics in the last 30 minutes or so. Can you just give us a bit of a recap of some of the key messages? Uh, yep, I'm going to have a new one um, just to cover off on Berry Bank. It's really important that when we ask for those uh, hectares planted um, that we get that accurate information back, um, and that really is what we base the, uh, the decision to not take barley at Berry Bank off this year uh, and then talk to some pea growers. So if you fill that out, um, and we'll make our decisions off that. So, uh, yeah, like Lou said, we certainly were looking at barley uh, and when we will again in the future, but we just need that information. Um, for me, the other key change is obviously our COVID plan. Um, the site's going as contactless as possible. Um, obviously, one thing I don't know that we've mentioned is that you, it, if we're still in the restrictions that we are, we will need masks on top of all of the other um, items that we talked about. Um, but hopefully by the time we get to here, it won't be mandatory. Um, obviously, our del delivery advice forms, I've just covered off. They're there for the samples and deliveries, um, and all grain that comes in will be placed automatically in a warehouse. Um, then, obviously, Crop Connect, you can utilise that to transfer to contract, cash, pools, um, do your invoices, manage your notifications. Um, so that's a really good tool to use. And I would also suggest that you check your personal details with NGR prior to harvest and complete the canola sustainability declaration if you wish, as Chris I went through. Um, and that's it. Lovely. Thanks, Craig. Now, prior to wrapping up the webinar, I just want to go back around the grounds and get the final thoughts from the team. I'll kick off with Luke. Yeah. So, yeah, we'd just like to remind uh, growers and truck drivers when they visit the site, they have all the appropriate, appropriate uh, PPE, um, their, their vests or high vis, um, their glasses, hat, and the sturdy footwear, ankle high footwear. Um, we'd just I like to have all that stuff. Um, We'd like a safe, dry harvest, uh, hopefully. And just remember, like, berry banks change. So um, that old entrance on the Fox Howe Road will be shut. Um, there'll be a new entrance off the Hamilton Highway. The traffic flow um, will be changed. So, yeah, if you just take your time, you first load in. So, yeah, um, that's all I've got. Thank you, Izzy. Thanks, Luke. That creates a pretty good segue to a question that we've got here from Steve. Steve's question is, what's the PPE requirement down at the port? Craig, can you give us an update on this one? Uh, yes, I can. Um, great question, Steve. Uh, so it's the same as up country uh, for truck drivers. So safety boots, high vis, clothing, safety glasses, and just a hat or something on your head, and that's it. There are no hard hats required for truck drivers. Brilliant. Thanks, Steve. I've got a question from Lockie. Can you can they hand the forms back to the truckie or do we need to print a new form each time? And will there ever be a GM seg down at down at Geelong or down at the bunker site? I'll get Craig to answer this one for us. Lockie, how's it going? Um, yeah, look, we we do we won't be handing the forms back, um, as I said earlier. Um, so yeah, you will need one. So, well, another form for each load. Um, so if you did do that pre-populated route off the internet, it's uh, it's a lot easier. Um, will there ever be a GM seg at Geelong and Cryer? Um, Lucky, I think that you've seen that there has been in the past. It, it didn't go well. Um, and ultimately, whether we take GM at the port or not is driven by the market. Um, and there really hasn't been that need to. Uh, and that grain sat there for two years, which took up space um, and didn't really do anybody a lot of good. But once again, if the market dictates that that value is there, uh, then we'll certainly look at it again. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks, Craig, and thanks for that question, Lucky. I've got one here from Ewan. How can we obtain the delivery advice books? I'll get Craig to answer this one as well. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, the delivery advice books, all you'll have to do is once we've got them, hopefully by the end of the week or early next week, um, if you pop into the Berry Bank site, um, West Wim or Laura or Geelong, um, yeah, you'll be able to get some. Um, or you can give us a call and we can post some out. Brilliant. Thank you. If you've got any more questions, keep sending them through and we'll answer them prior to, um, to wrapping up. 
I'll go across to Chris just to get your final thoughts and anything else you wanted to mention, please. Thanks, Izzy. Uh, look, just as we move through what will be a, a very large East Coast harvest, I encourage everyone to sign up and get yourself up to speed with Crop Connect uh, just to enable you to take advantage of any market volatility that could come our way. As uh, Craig's mentioned a couple of times there, just prepare yourself with those delivery advices and some good questions coming in. Um, and make sure you're on all our communication lists so that you can receive all our pricing opening hours and just don't miss any information coming out from us. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Chris. And last but not least, I'll go across to Craig. Thanks, Izzy. Um, and certainly thank you to everybody that's attended today. Look, I'm really excited. Uh, the crop looks like it's got massive potential. Um, I think that uh, we're as well planned as we've ever been and we've got more gear than we've ever had. Um, I know that the people on the ground are super keen to just get into the harvest and, uh, yeah, I hope that we get good weather through it um, and look forward to seeing people as we get out and about um, and wish everyone a safe and successful harvest. Lovely. Thanks, Craig. Now, that concludes our webinar for this afternoon. Hopefully this session has provided you with some knowledge and insight into what Grain Corp is doing this harvest to ensure your safety, the safety of the community and the safety of our staff members. I thank you again for your time and the questions that you've posted this afternoon and I wish you all the very best for Harvest.